In geometry, we say a region R is convex if the straight line between any two points lies within the region. Most regions are not convex. However, any triangular region is convex, and any rectilinear region can be partitioned into triangular regions. We'll focus on what are known as simplicial triangulations. A triangulation of a region is simplicial if any two triangles are either completely disjoint or share either a vertex or a complete edge. For example, this triangulation is not simplicial because these two triangles share part of an edge but not a complete edge. But we can modify our triangulation to make it simplicial. Remember, a graph represents relationships between objects. In a triangulation, we have triangles that might or might not be adjacent. So we can represent a triangulation using a graph where the vertices are the triangles and the edges represent a connection between the triangles. One possibility is to draw an edge between two vertices if the corresponding triangles are adjacent. So we might try to draw a graph representing this triangulation. Since the vertices represent the triangles, we'll put a vertex inside each triangle. And since the edges represent adjacencies, we'll draw an edge through each side of every triangle. We note the following. Any triangle on the boundary corresponds to a vertex with degree 1 or 2 depending on how many triangles it's adjacent to. Meanwhile, any triangle on the interior corresponds to a vertex with degree 3. The handshake theorem guarantees the number of vertices of odd degree must be even, and so the layout on the boundary determines whether there are an odd or an even number of interior triangles. In fact, we can go a little further. If one edge of a triangle is on the boundary, then the other two edges must be adjacent to two other triangles. If two edges of the triangle are on the boundary, then the triangle must be adjacent to just one other. But the only place a triangle could have two edges on the boundary is for it to share a vertex with the boundary. So the triangles at the vertices of the region are important. For example, suppose the boundary of a triangulated region is shown, and we want to find the number of interior triangles. So we don't actually even know how the triangles are situated along the boundaries, but we do know what they look like at the vertices. So there are seven triangles at the vertices. Only one of them is adjacent to an odd number of other triangles. So there's only one triangle corresponding to a vertex of degree 1, so there must be an odd number of additional triangles corresponding to vertices of degree 3. But a vertex of degree 3 corresponds to a triangle adjacent to three others, and such a triangle must be on the interior. So there must be an odd number of triangles on the interior of the figure. Suppose we triangulate a triangular region then label the vertices, we'll label the original vertex with vertex labels 0, 1, and 2, and then any vertex on the original sides must be assigned the value of one of the endpoints. For example, these points on this edge 0, 2 will either be labeled 0 or 2, Likewise, the points on the edge 1, 2 will either be labeled 1 or 2, and the points on the edge 0, 1 will be labeled either 0 or 1. Internal vertices can be assigned any way you want. 
This produces a proper labeling of the symphysial triangulation. And note this gives us six different types of edges. Zero, 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 one, zero, two, one, 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 two, and two, two. This time, we'll create a graph by putting an edge between two vertices if the corresponding regions share a zero, one edge. Now, there's one inconsistency that makes the problem harder. All three edges of any interior triangle are the edges of another triangle. But at least one edge of a boundary triangle is not the edge of another triangle. This means that a zero one edge on a boundary triangle is treated differently from a zero one edge on an interior triangle. To fix this, we'll treat the outside as another region corresponding to some vertex we'll call V0. And as before, an edge will join two vertices if the corresponding regions share a 0, 1 edge. So here's how that might look. We'll have our V0, our exterior region, and then we'll have vertices corresponding to each of the triangles. And if there's a 0, 1 edge between two regions, we'll put an edge between the corresponding vertices. And so we get Now, note that a triangle might have no zero one edges, so a vertex could have degree zero and be an isolated vertex. Or it might have one or two zero one edges, but it can't have three. So every vertex in the graph will have degree zero, one, or two, with one exception. This exterior vertex V0 could be adjacent to any number of triangles, so its degree could be anything. Or could it? If you build it, they will come. So note that to form our triangulation, it's as if we selected points in and on the boundary of the triangle. Then join these points to form our triangulation. The vertices that could be adjacent to V0 correspond to triangles with an edge along 0, 1. So imagine we select points along this edge and label them as we go. If the two adjacent vertices have different numbers, then regardless of how we label the new point, the number of 0, 1 edges stays the same. Meanwhile, if the adjacent vertices have the same number, the number of 0, 1 edges stays the same, or it increases by 2. Since we begin with one 0, 1 edge, then the degree of V0 must be odd. And so by the handshaking theorem, at least one other vertex has odd degree. Since all other vertices have degree 0, 1, or 2, then there must be at least one other degree 1 vertex. This corresponds to a triangle whose vertices are labeled 0, 1, and 2. This is called a distinguished triangle. Consequently, every properly labeled simplicial triangulation of a triangle must have at least one distinguished triangle. This result, known as Sperner's lemma, is a remarkable statement because it means that fixing the boundaries imposes a property on the interior. In particular, as long as the boundary vertices are properly labeled, the interior vertices could be labeled any way we want but we can't avoid a triangle whose vertices have three different labels. We can think of this as a smaller version of the original, which leads us to an even more surprising result. We'll take a look at that next.